Hello, I'm Megan Blanchett with O'Reilly Media, and I'm here with Jennifer Hodgson, who is a Drupal site builder and module programmer. Thank you for being here, Jennifer. Well, thanks for having me. What frustrates programmers most about Drupal? I think the main frustration that programmers who are new to Drupal have is just the complexity of Drupal. I mean, there are you know thousands of files between, I guess, at least a couple thousand files, and um, nothing's really obvious at first glance, like how does Drupal work? How does it all work together to put pages up on your website? And as a programmer, especially if you're kind of new to Drupal and you've done some web programming before, you know how to make web pages appear, but it's just not obvious how Drupal does that. So I think that's the biggest frustration for new programmers. And then for more experienced programmers, I think they would get um, frustrated most by things just not working the way they expect they should or things not matching the documentation. And hopefully that's not as much of a problem in Drupal core as it used to be. Um, but it's always a problem when you're programming with contributed modules that sometimes they're not documented completely and um, you can have trouble just finding information about how you're supposed to interact with that module. And what are some strategies for dealing with those issues? I would say that the first strategy for new programmers is to just program less. Um, you know, you can approach uh, Drupal by trying to program as much as possible. Um, and it's just not really the best approach. If you try to learn how to do things using the user interface and the configuration system, you're going to be better off than trying to program your way out of everything you can think of. Um, so that that's, I think, my, my first strategy. You know, learn how to use the views module, learn how to use the panels module, the context module, and things like that to build sites. And only program when you really need to to add things to those modules. Um, and the second thing I would say as a new programmer is that you really have to learn the Drupal way of doing things. And so, you know, if you are trying to, um, if you do find a case where you need to program something, learn the right way to do it and start that way rather than, um, uh, you know, just guessing. Um, and, uh, you know, going to your local Drupal user group meeting can help or hanging out on the Drupal IRC channels and things like that. You could, there's a lot of information out there in the community and if you don't take advantage of it, you're kind of losing out on a great resource. And, you know, if you had... and the, also that resource goes for the more experienced programmers too, because when you're, even if you're an experienced programmer, if you're approaching a new area of Drupal that you haven't used before or haven't programmed with before, asking around in the community like, how did you do this before will really help um, get you going in the right way. If you had a top four list of what to tell new programmers with Drupal, what would that be? Well, the first thing would be, I guess, what I just said in, in, the, uh, in your previous question, which is you know, program only when you need to and do, you know, try to do it the right way. Um, uh, the second thing I would say is make sure your code is really secure. So there are a lot of, um, if you subscribe to the security list in Drupal, you'll get security updates uh, every week or two. There are a few about contributed modules that didn't pro properly sanitize their data um, and things like that. So you can really open your website up to cross-site scripting attacks and denial of service attacks by not programming carefully. So that's another gotcha. And that's co pretty much common to all web programming, not just Drupal. Um, uh, Drupal does have some good tools for making sure your, your um, code is secure, so just use those tools. Um, the third thing I would say is um, think about uh, accessibility. So that could be accessibility for people with disabilities, it could be expanded to think about just making it usable for everybody, and also um, making sure that your code is usable by international users so that it's internationalized. So just keep that in mind that a lot of different people might end up using your site or your code eventually. Um, and then the last thing I would say is testing and documentation. So if you're going to maintain your code for the long term, which you probably will be, um, having it documented will really help that. And um, having automated tests is also a good way to make sure it's actually working correctly. Well, and to wrap up, you know, what are you excited about with Drupal right now? Anything coming up? Anything going on that you're really hyped about? Well, everybody's excited about Drupal 8. Um, that's the new version that's in development. And uh, for me, it's a it's going to be exciting. It means I'm going to have to update my book, I guess, um, for a new version. But um, there are a lot of really um, 
really big changes in Drupal 8. Um, one of them is that the views module, which everybody uses to build websites, is going to be in Drupal core. That's a great thing. Um, that will also make the programming with views more regularized, which is also a good thing, and better documented, I hope, which is which will help. Um, and then the, there are just a lot of other initiatives in Drupal 8 that will make Drupal even more object-oriented than it has been, um, and uh, more able to build uh, mobile websites and responsive design than it was before. So those are exciting things that I need to learn more about. I've been um, learning about them some because I volunteer a lot of time with the Drupal project and I um, am able to commit API documentation patches to the, to the code repository and things, but um, I need to learn more about them and start programming with them before I'll be ready to update my book and building Drupal 8 websites as well. So those are, that's a really exciting thing. And then um, in the Drupal project, uh, we also have a new leader of the documentation team. So that's a good development. The, I was the leader of the documentation team in um, 2011 and 12, um, half of 2012, and we were without a documentation team leader for half the year. So um, uh, Lee Hunter just stepped up to that role. So that's a great uh, thing too, because not having a documentation leader means things aren't really happening in documentation. And of course I have kind of a passion for documentation. How long have you been working with the Drupal project? Um, pretty much since I started working with Drupal itself, so five or six years. Um, I've been, uh, I was uh, one of the top patch contributors to Drupal 7, mostly for API documentation patches. And um, I've since become uh, sort of the coordinator for the API documentation, so. Well, thank you very much for talking with us today and giving us some insight. Thanks for having me. You're welcome.